Hey, what's up? Matt Carlson here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the best results with drone hyperlapses. I have been flying drones for about eight years, and I'm a licensed unmanned aircraft pilot. Now I'm going to focus more on nighttime hyperlapses since that's what I mainly use them for. But the same settings still apply for daytime hyperlapses. You just need to add an ND filter to be able to get the shutter speed down to have enough motion blur in daylight. The main reason why I film drone hyperlapses at night is because the sensors on drones are typically very small, one inch or so. And as a result, night footage typically looks like trash in my opinion, because there just isn't enough light for that small of a sensor without the footage looking muddy and noisy. But if you capture a night hyperlapse, which uses still photos pieced together like a time-lapse would be, you are able to open the shutter for longer to let more light in which in turn produces a much cleaner image. Also, having the ability to capture raw still images means you can push and pull the image in post-production much more than you could a baked in compressed video file. Hyperlapses look the best when there is a lot of movement in the shot. So typically, this involves cars, boats, trains, people, or clouds if it's during the daytime. You always want to have an interesting subject in your hyperlapse for the audience to direct their eyes to. You also want to shoot in RAW, as I mentioned earlier, to give you the maximum flexibility with the images in post. And always dial in every setting manually, such as white balance. Never use auto mode. So let's get into some specific settings which work for me. First and foremost, let's talk about shutter speed. I've done tests with a bunch of different shutter speeds, and I have found that one fourth of a second works the best for me. It's a fine line between too long of a shutter speed where the drone will shake and your image will come out blurry, and too short of a shutter speed where you don't get any motion blur and your image looks jumpy. So one fourth of a second was that happy medium for me. Next are intervals of how long between images. I have found that two seconds works best for me since it can give me a longer hyperlapse in a shorter amount of time. It's easy to speed up a hyperlapse if your edit requires that, but you can't slow down a hyperlapse without having to interpret frames and it just won't look right. Clip length is totally user preference based on your edit. But again, it's better to have too much and just edit it down or speed it up. So I prefer anywhere from 12 to 14 seconds for final clip length. My favorite hyperlapse mode is waypoints where you can just set a couple spots in the air and the drone will fly between them. I also like the fact that you can fly to the end of your shot and set a waypoint and then fly to the beginning of your shot and then select to run the hyperlapse in reverse so you don't have to waste battery flying back to the beginning to start. I like to use the free mode if I'm doing a straight down hyperlapse because the drone will just maintain its position and then you have so much resolution in post to push in or pull out since they are still images pieced together. Circle and Course Lock have a benefit because they allow you to get the hyperlapse started faster without using so much battery. Just select an image on the screen and the drone will circle around it either clockwise or counterclockwise. You can get two hyperlapses out of one battery, but it's close. So be careful you don't run it down too far or you won't have enough to return home and the drone will just land wherever it currently is. When it comes to editing, I prefer to use Lightroom. This obviously comes down to personal preference as far as details within Lightroom for your image as every shot is different. Just edit one image in the middle and then sync all of the other images and export. Then I take those images into After Effects as I would a time-lapse 
and it automatically creates a hyperlapse video for you. Now, most likely the video will be shaky and you'll need to apply warp stabilizer in the effects panel. There are some cases where warp stabilizer isn't enough and you have to motion track to stabilize the image in After Effects. This is a really effective technique and there are tons of videos on YouTube on how to do this. Perhaps I'll even make a follow-up video on how I specifically stabilize my drone hyperlapses. I'm new to the YouTube game and I'm gonna start creating a lot more videos. So subscribe if you'd like to learn more about video. Thanks for watching.